Right now on WUSA 9 News at 11, we have brand new details on the big story of the weekend that so many are still talking about. The sonic boom heard across the D.C. region and the deadly plane crash that followed. Good evening, I'm Leslie Foster. That plane crashed in southwestern Virginia. Federal investigators will be back on the scene to sift through the wreckage tomorrow. The wreckage is destroyed, meaning that it is no longer distinguishable as an aircraft. However, there are still several pieces that might be able to assist our fact finding stage at this point. This all happened after military jets scrambled to intercept the plane shortly after it entered restricted airspace over DC. Those jets got the OK to fly at supersonic speeds, causing that boom heard all across our area. We spent the night gathering updates for you. Adam Longo is learning more about the four people killed in the crash. But first, Casey Nolan has new insight on the investigation, the lingering questions, and of course, what comes next, Casey? Leslie, when military jets scrambled to intercept the plane, what those military pilots reportedly saw may be the best piece of evidence investigators have, considering what the crash scene looks like. A crater of wreckage in a hard to reach ridge of rural Virginia mountains. Well, this is a, a unique situation that will be a real challenge. Former NTSB investigator Dr. Alan Deal spent more than three decades investigating plane crashes. He says with so little of this plane left, the best evidence of what happened may be what the intercepting F-16 pilots saw when they pulled alongside the Cessna Citation private jet. Its pilot reportedly slumped over at the controls. That tells me as an aviation human factors investigator, uh, it points towards hypoxia. According to flight data, the plane was traveling at 34,000 feet in the air. Deal says if the plane lost cabin pressure at that altitude, it could have caused the pilot and passengers to black out from a lack of oxygen. The onset can be very subtle. You can think you are having a headache. And without an oxygen mask, it can take just seconds to cause a blackout. Deal says the NTSB will consider other possible reasons the pilot was unresponsive, but if the F-16 pilots did not see anyone else in the cockpit, he suspects that means they were already unconscious too. There were two adults. You'd think they would have noticed that this pilot uh, was in, incapacitated and would have tried to either put an oxygen mask on him or at least move him off the controls. November 611 Victor Gulf, if you hear New York Center, I dent. The pilot was not responding to air traffic control when the plane made a U-turn near New York and headed back through restricted airspace over D.C. A flight instructor tells WUSA 9 it's possible the autopilot turned the plane back when the pilot failed to land in New York. Probably the only... And what Dr. Deal was starting to say there is it appears if this is the case that all the passengers were unconscious and did not suffer at the time of impact. So that might be one merciful aspect of what happened. Now, these types of private planes are not required to have black boxes or cockpit voice recorders, but I'm told insurance companies still often require them. The NTSB says so far they have not found those boxes at the crash site, but they are still looking, Leslie. There's so much to go through and so much to think about as those last moments were coming through there. Wow.